Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to another one of my videos. My name is Naomi T. Grant. If this is your first time here, if this is not your first time here, thank you so much for tuning back in. On my channel, I create beauty, fashion, and lifestyle content. So if you guys are interested in content like that, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing some, I guess, mistakes that I've made or lessons that I've learned in the first year of my business. Those of you guys who may not know, and if you're a subscriber, you guys probably know that I launched a skincare line early in 2021. The company was called Xiaomi, it's called Xiaomi, and I sold whipped body butters, whipped body polishes, things of that nature. I made everything by hand. It was kind of like a made to order business model. And within that year, I have learned so much and, um, I made a few mistakes I had so many successes and in this video I just wanted to share my journey throughout the first year of my business to really help anyone who is thinking about starting their own business or going through some challenges in their business and um, hopefully give you guys some advice some tips and tricks so you guys don't have to go do the same things that I went through and also give you some ideas of some probably didn't think about when thinking about starting your own business so without too much rambling let's get right into it okay guys so I really wanted to focus on the why behind my business why you start a business is really important because once business starts becoming business and it starts becoming really difficult and tricky if you don't have a strong why behind why you want to launch your product and have other people try out whatever service or project or product that you have it will make you want to quit like you will want to say you know why am I doing this I can make so I can make money doing something else so much easier what is the purpose of this struggle especially in the first year of your business you're gonna be putting out a lot of time and money to get your brand just started that you might find that you're not willing to take make a lot of those um, sacrifices and spend as much money to do certain things because the passion behind it isn't there your why isn't there and that is okay that is okay for you to notice before you make the mistake of investing so much into a business that this is not something that you actually care to turn into a business because you're just not that interested and honestly I'm going to be circling back on this topic a little bit later but my good friend Sarita J I will leave her Instagram handle right here she's a brand strategist and she helped me with my branding she did a beautiful live yesterday that I watched that was just so incredible about why certain passions don't need to be made for profit I will also be doing a video with her very soon she has so much amazing information that I think other business owners entrepreneurs people who want to you know create a brand for themselves they can really get a lot of useful information from her and book her if you are interested you're already trying to find someone she's wonderful but in her life she spoke about why certain passion projects and you know things that you really care to create and do might just be great as a hobby and don't need to be turned into profit because you can lose a lot of the joy out of it when turning it into a business even if it is very successful so I launched Xiaomi in March of 2021, but prior to that, maybe like a year prior to that, maybe even two years, I had been working on this, this project for fun. It was something that I created because I had eczema, I was struggling with my skin, holding on moisture, my skin just wasn't like how it used to be, and I wanted to find something that not only was going to heal my skin, but also be natural and really good, and I ended up purchasing Whip Body Butter at, um... A store and I said you know I feel like I can make this at home and I started making it for myself for my son so in that first two years I was doing it simply for myself and then selling it to friends and family and they then were telling me you know this product is really good I've seen products similar to this at like street festivals and different things and I think that you can sell this and make a lot of money doing it also as a backstory I or just kind of as a disclaimer, I've always had an interest in business. I have a degree in business, so launching a business was never something that was so far-fetched for me. It was something I actually knew that I would do at some point. Also, prior to launching my business, I had already utilized my social media platform as a platform where I would speak about 
beauty, skincare, fashion, things of that nature. So selling a skincare product wasn't so off brand for me. So this is really important if you are selling a product that is linked to you as a person. Try to launch something that is very connected to your you as a person and I guess your brand. And I think a lot of people don't really see themselves as a brand because I'm just a person. Like, what do you mean? How do I brand myself? But I was already on the road to really pursuing being a influencer and even before I had an idea of me being an influencer, I was always kind of like that go-to person in my friends circle and my family circle where people would come to me for advice for beauty fashion and stuff like that because of the industry that I was working in and just my passion behind those things. So that's really important if you're going to use yourself as um a, as a like a brand ambassador for your brand, make sure you're selling a product that it makes sense that you would sell. Like I there's so many things I wouldn't sell. Like I wouldn't sell sports products because I don't show fitness and stuff like that on my channel. That would be weird. And people would look at me selling that product and wonder, is this just a cash grab or is this something that actually works? But because I had been sharing my experience with my skin, sharing me using the product before even developing it as my, you know, having a name for the product before even deciding I was going to really launch this. So many people had seen me speak about the product that I was making and guessing what it might be. So I kind of built, it, built up anticipation for it without even thinking about it because it's always so natural for me to share products and ingredients and make stuff and all of that. Okay. So that is a huge part that I think is important that you guys understand. Make sure you're, whatever you're selling is connected to who you are. Also, I did have a website prior to launching my business, Naomi T. Grand Beauty. And that was basically like what my YouTube channel is. But on my website, I would share and, and review different products, speak about certain skincare, beauty products, things like that. So I already had that. So when I was thinking of launching my business, I decided that it would be a good idea for me to launch this product under an LLC. So I got an LLC to launch this product, but also got it under the guise that I would use my LLC and TG Beauty to launch other products in connection to my brand in the future. Just in case I decided that, you know, having a skincare line, Xiaomi wasn't something that I wanted to do long term. And I think it's really important to set yourself up just in case, not only if you fail, but if you decide you don't want to do it later. Because if I got my LLC and the name of it was Xiaomi, and then I decide I don't want to do anything with that name anymore, I'm basically stuck and um, might have to lose the LLC or change the name and all of that costs money, right? I got my LLC through Zoom Legal, I believe. I will link it down below. If you guys want a video of me speaking about how I got my LLC and all of that, I would gladly do that. But that's where I got it. It was super easy to do. Please read the fine prints because even with it being super easy, I still made mistakes. And um, again, I can talk about that in another video. So boom, I have the LLC. And I'm now deciding I want to launch this product. So prior to launching it, I was making the product for friends and family. I was using basically random jars that I had here and there. I probably bought like some jars from Amazon, but nothing to the scale of me having a business. Now that I'm thinking of having a business, having a website where I'm selling my product on the internet where anybody all over the world can see, I had to then have enough inventory to scale a business of that, of, of what I had in mind. When I was thinking of doing my first initial launch, I knew that it would, I thought that it would take me maybe like three months to sell out and I ended up selling out of all of my products in like 24 I think 24 hours or 48 hours one of the two but it was just like mind-boggling that I was able to sell out of my product so fast and this is why making sure that you have enough inventory is so important because had I launched my business with the idea that mm, it's going to take me a few months for me to sell out of each product I don't have to have all of the jars all of the labels, all of the shipment packaging, I don't have to have all of the ingredients all on hand, I could have really messed up my first launch because I wouldn't have been able to deliver my product in the timely fashion. Getting the jar, I decided to not go with like Alibaba or anything overseas. I purchased my jars through a um, company in the US, but even that takes maybe two weeks. My labels, I designed my labels by myself, but I did ship them through a company. I ordered them through Avery.com. 
that sometimes takes two weeks my ingredients I was able to find a place where I can get all of my ingredients wholesale in person so that wasn't gonna take long to do but you know whatever happened if what if I go to the place to buy my products and they don't have that product in stock that might take a while too so you have to realize that there's so much about having the type of business that I had where there's so many things that can go wrong that are out of my control and the best way for you to control those things is to be prepared so I had all of my ingredients I wasn't waiting for something to come in the mail I wasn't gonna have my clients think I wasn't lying to my clients and saying that my website had certain things in stock to make a profit off of sales and then use that to then buy the things that I need to make the product no I had everything so when I sold out so fast I was making all the products by hand I was packaging them I was labeling them I shipped them out I did them all myself and um, I found that doing it that way was actually helpful for a large order like I was filling large orders but when business started to slow down I didn't have um I guess my recipe called for me to be making bigger or more quantities of products and even when I tried to scale my recipe down as small as I could it sometimes could conflict with the integrity of the the product as a whole what I'm trying to explain is that my recipes called for a bigger quantity of products. And sometimes if a client was ordering just one or two products, I was left with a lot of leftover products that I couldn't use. But what if my products didn't have a good shelf life? You know, like what if they didn't? And I'm, I have to make each thing to order and I'm making it and somebody else, the next order that came around, they want a whole different scent and I can't use that. So those are things that really, those are things that I really had to figure out as I was going along with my business. Even the time that it took to fulfill one small order and then have some extra products to the side, hoping that people will buy that product. Um, the time that it took to fulfill that order for one person took so much more time than when I, if I was fulfilling like 10 orders. Same time that it took me to make five products for five customers is the same time that it took me to make one product for one customer and in one instance I'm making so much money and one I'm barely making enough and it's like I did all that work for what 40 bucks so these are things to really consider when launching your business now, I know this is not something that a lot of business owners deal with depending on the type of product or even if you're selling a service you may not have that issue but what I was beginning to learn is that the labor cost what the amount of time and effort that it takes for you to make that product and ship out that product and do all those things those things you really have to take a, take into account when pricing out your products and it's not the customer's fault because there's but so much you can charge for a specific product before you're pricing out a huge audience your product might not be worth whatever thing that you think you need to price it as in order for you to feel like you're making a profit for the amount of work that you're making what you then need to do is and this is something I struggled with is try to branch out to another audience you need to get more customers your goal as a business owner is to always get new customers new 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 no matter how loyal your fan base your customer base is no matter how frequently they buy your product there's always gonna be a time when they're gonna say I don't need it because I either have enough or I want to try something else there's always gonna be that there's products I can think of right now that I love so so much and I would love to have it all the time but there's times where I just can't even afford to expense that because I have other things going on and it's just easier for me to get something that's more accessible and more affordable right and because I my branding was these were luxurious handmade products this was something that was a lot of people might see as just a treat and what I then ended up learning throughout my business and something I didn't take account for in the beginning is that there were people who were purchasing my products in bulk for like parties and stuff like that so they were like a nice gift to give your friends and family um, but this might not be a product that you could always say I have to always have and replenish like I do I only use my products exclusively I don't use any other 
body butter or body polish I only use my products but that's not the same for everyone so you always want to try to get new customers and a great way to do that is utilizing social media social media is the the best way for you to get a new audience create multiple TikToks in a day creating multiple reels in a day this is something I just did not do and and I did not want to do honestly I I have the capacity to I have the talent to I have the background to I didn't want to do it so these are things that you have to even work in put into your schedule in terms of the labor that it takes for you to get more customers you're spending all this time fulfilling orders all of these things but you also have to get new customers so you have to think of ways for you to create get new a bigger audience so that might be utilizing social media that might be putting your products in in other stores so you might have to go to stores and speak to small business owners speak to, about your brand and another way that you can do this when you have a tangible product is doing pop-ups so pop-ups are really great um especially if you live in like a city like mine there's tons of places for you to do pop-ups and it was something that i just not only i didn't think about but it was something i was just not interested in doing you know the pandemic was still a pandemic and i really didn't feel comfortable doing like selling my product in person with people however when i did eventually do a pop-up i was like I should have done this such a long time ago because i was able to sell out of so much inventory and in one you know in a matter of what five to six hours you know sell out of all of my inventory and make a good amount of money these are great ways to introduce your brand to people who don't know a thing about you there's so many businesses out there there's so many competitors even in industries that you don't think they're that there are competitors and the best way to get yourself out there is having people see you and see you you know just really being seen by people who would not see you otherwise so being really consistent when pushing your business is important it's a lot of work and it's something a lot of people don't take into account and hence why so many brands decide to hire people to outsource to do those skills because it might not be something that you are good at and even on that topic of outsourcing there were certain things that i could do myself i took all of my brand photos myself for my website for different um promo promos or um campaigns i did all of my content i was my own model i am comfortable in front of a camera i have equipment i have light sources i create content so that was not hard for me to do but if this is not something that you have the um not even a talent to do because i think anybody can teach themselves anything but you might not have the bandwidth to do all of that you might have to outsource it you might have to do all your big photo shoots with the photographer you might have to pay somebody to do these things these are things that you have to take into account when financing or thinking about launching your business and this is also when having an llc really does come into play especially in the first year if you launching a business you will get percent basically like a hundred percent back of all of the expenses that you make in the first year of you having your llc so this is something i didn't know but um had i known this i would have utilized that a lot more i would have taken a lot more risk in my first year because the reason why you're able to do that is because they assume that in the first year you are going to be taking a lot of risk and making a lot of mistakes and this is your way to make all of your mistakes and get some of the profit back now you will continue to get some profit back and this is why people like to have llc's because then you as a person are not liable for any of the mistakes that you may your business might make but you can also get some of the money that you expend out back so had i had that in mind throughout that whole first year I would have been doing pop-ups I would have been taking more risks in terms of working with photographers I worked on my branding maybe I would have actually expensed to get really nice shipping boxes versus I got free USPS boxes that I used to ship out my products which I thought was really great and a great way to save money in the first year of your business and I didn't see anything wrong with that I utilized different ways to brand my business when you open the box i have brown tissue paper which was the color scheme of my business i had thank you cards where i wrote handwritten thank you notes to my customers i had stickers all of my brands had the same like color scheme and vibe so there was ways that i did work on branding even if i didn't have tons of money invested in it but had i had that in my mind which i can't believe i didn't i probably would have invested more into that and took more risk in that first year and 
did it under the guise that I'm going to get it back. I'm going to get it back. It's okay if I push through. I'm going to get it back. Even if right now it seems like I am putting out a lot, a lot, a lot. And I'm not getting it back with my sales. So, um, it's a lot to consider as a business owner. But it's important to think of these things so you don't go into it blindly. Even something as simple as having a website. Again, I spoke a little earlier. I already had a website set up, but I didn't have a website to sell products. So the website that I had was a, a website through Squarespace. And on this website, I, I used it like a blog, but you do have the ability to sell products. And when switching my website from the way that it was, which I think at the time I was spending like, I paid like 10 to $15 a month switching it to a website that I was now selling product on made it $50 a month now in that first few months when sales were coming in I was selling out it was nothing that $50 was nothing that was like what one order to cover that expense but when you have months where you're not really making a lot of money for your business it becomes really like you see that $50 come out of your account and you're like oh like this is not the time. And this is why getting new customers, doing pop-up shops, all of those things are great because they do allow you to continue to bring in more people and bring in money in different ways, selling your products in store. You're bringing in money on different avenues that even if you're not making the sale on your website, you have another way that you're able to pay for it, you know? So I wanted to mention that because that's a whole nother thing. Where are you going to sell your products? How are you selling your products? Are, what websites are you going to use? Do you have your own independent website? Are you going to sell it on a platform where it is like a store where other people can find your products like Amazon, like Etsy? All of those things you have to think about. Now, this video is getting quite long. And um, without it getting too long, I think I'm going to end this here and I'm going to do a part two. In the part two, I will be speaking about what I decided to do with my business now that I've made a lot of these mistakes, I'm making a lot of changes and I will be speaking about what I'm going to be doing with my business now, why I'm doing it. And um, yeah, if you guys have any questions that you would like me to answer in my part two of this video please link them down below i know that a lot of my audience when i post other like content about my brand in the past so many of you guys want to launch your own businesses or are business owners yourself and i would love my comments to be a really great space for us to just talk with one another help each other out and if you guys have any questions that i have the ability to answer i would love to answer them in my second part to this video and if i am not qualified to answer like if there are any branding or strategy strategy questions I will then transfer you over to my good friend who worked with me and helped me with my branding and creating a strategy for me to have a brand for my business she is wonderful I spoke about her earlier Sadita J Mrs. Sadita J is her Instagram handle and again I will have her on another video in the future so stay tuned for that make sure that you guys leave your questions down in the comments I would answer them all in the comments as well as any of the ones that really stood out to me I will feature them in my part two make sure that you guys subscribe like and share I hope you guys enjoyed this video it was a pleasure making it for you guys and I will see you guys all in my next video bye